I'm really wondering when this offense is gonna show up. <laughs> Welcome to Philly Sensitive Media, and today we're going to recap in last night's game of Tuna Filthy Phillies in the Colorado Rockies. As the Phillies lose 4-1 to to the Rockies, and uh, their bad struggles out there in Colorado continue last night. Now, guys, before getting into this video, please subscribe if you haven't yet. Please don't the bell. Please like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and let's get into this. This video is also brought to you by All Things Phillies. All Things Phillies provides a daily video of highlights from the game, so please go subscribe to his channel. Link in the description section. Uh, so the offense, I mean, it wasn't very good in the Miami series. It was great on Saturday night when we scored 10 runs, uh, and we only scored one measly run last night. Uh, and uh, we just continue to squander opportunities to run in scoring position. Uh, but I tell you what, in the top of the eighth inning, we really got unlucky, right? With JT Muto lining the ball back to the pitcher, then they double off uh, Didi at second. Uh, so that was very unlikely. I will say that. But, I mean, you have to win these games. I mean, we're playing against this really just not a good Colorado Rockies team. I've never seen a team not be able to beat bad teams. I mean, we definitely would have made the playoffs last year if we just would have taken two out of three in that Arizona Diamondback series. If we just would have beat the Marlins and not lost to them so frequently, uh, we just struggled to do that. Uh, so if you do notice, I mean, it's pretty obvious I'm in a different setting. I'm in Estero, Florida, and I apologize for not being able to, for you not being able to see my eyes. I had to wear sunglasses. It's so bright out here. Uh, but uh, anyway, I'm definitely frustrated about this Phillies loss. I mean, uh, the Mets just, I mean, of course, they got rained out last night, but uh, they're still playing good baseball. As you pick up the scoring summary here in the bottom of the sixth inning, Troy Blackman has not had a good start to his season, uh, but he always seems to play well when he uh, is playing against us as he owners on a fly ball to center field. It was pretty much a no-doubter off of Aaron Nola, and it's one nothing Colorado here in the sixth. Uh, so uh, he's definitely well liked by the fans uh, at Coors Field. Of course, that walk-up song they you know always sing it when he's uh, coming up to the plate. Uh, so uh, one nothing Colorado. And then we pick it up here in the same inning as Jose Alvarado throws a wild pitch, uh, and C.J. Crone comes around to score. First of all, not a good throw by J.T. Muto right there. Kind of costs us a run there. Uh, so that run honestly shouldn't have scored. Uh, it wasn't the best throw, but honestly, Jose Alvarado has, you know, this wild and this continues. He never could locate very well. Uh, I, he just really bothers me. He really, really bothers me. I've never seen a guy uh, struggle with his command as much as Jose Alvarado. I just, I, I've never seen anything like it. Uh, so 2-0 uh, Rockies. Let me pick it up here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Uh, Randall Gritchick just kind of broke the game right open right here. I mean, this is when I kind of knew it was over. As he doubles on a sharp line drive the other way to right field. As Sam Hillard and Charlie Blackman come around to score. A nice relay to get him at third, though. That was a very, very nice job. And Nick Constantino is getting the ball in. And Gene Segor, you know, coming up firing uh, to get him at third. Nice tag right there by Alec Bohm. Uh, so it was a well-executed play right there. You know, good job to get the ball in. Uh, but unfortunately, it does not stop the two runs coming in the score to make it a 4-0 uh, Colorado lead. Uh, then in the top of the eighth inning, D.D. Gregorius coming off the bench as he goes the other way out to left field. On a line drive, Alec Bone comes around to score. Uh, and that was D.D.'s third double of the season. And it's now four to one ball game. So the Phillies finally get on the board. And as I said, J.T. Muto works a pretty good at bat. Then he lines the ball right back to the pitcher. He makes the catch. Uh, and then he flips it back to second. And they double off D.D. Uh, to end the inning. That was very, very unfortunate. Uh, I think we all were in disbelief. And we have second and third, one out. Uh, you know, we got something cooking, and J.T. Muto hits the ball right on the nose. Uh, and then, you know, the inning is over. I mean, of course, they're jogging back to the dugout. It just was just very, very frustrating. Uh, so uh, Joe Girardi continues to stick with this lineup uh, as J.T. Muto leads off the ball game. He only collects one knock. But as I said, I mean, he hit the ball super hard in the top of the eighth inning. Uh, and uh, Bryce Harper uh, also collecting a single. He's striking out a lot. Another two Ks last night. Uh, but uh, he'll be fine. I'm not really too worried about him. Nick Castellanos, a rare hitless performance last night. As I said, he did a good job getting the ball in on the relay. I thought it was a very uh, heads-up play by Nick Castellanos. Uh, and Reese Hoskins. I mean, this is why we love Reese. I mean, this is why he should be up in the lineup a little bit more. I mean, two walks last night, his ability to see the baseball uh, is great. And one thing about this Phillies offense is that we're not really taking our walks. I mean, we're not taking our walks as much as we should be. Uh, we're being very impatient. That's one thing I'm, I'm noticing. Not being patient enough. I think we're trying. We're not waiting to get our pitch. We're going up there trying to make something happen uh, instead of just trying to wait for our pitch. Right? I mean, that, that's that's the thing. Uh, I understand, of course, that's not going to happen sometimes, but, I mean, there, there has to be a certain level of patience that we just haven't been seeing. Uh, and Kyle Schwarber, another rough night last night. He's hitting just a measly 125. 
Uh, I understand we're only for the first 11 games of the season, but you couldn't have asked for a slower start than this. I understand this is what he did last year with Washington, but um, you know it's pretty disappointing to see a guy that signs a four-year deal start off this bad. Uh, he's definitely off to a rough start indeed. Uh, and uh, Alec Bum, another knock last night, scoring one of the Phil, you know, only Phil's run uh, on the Dita Gregorius RBI single. He needs to be up in the lineup. I mean, I don't understand why Joe Girardi, I mean, this offense is struggling. Joe Girardi bats him six. Uh, I don't understand. He needs to be up in the lineup. Uh, I don't really care uh, what anybody else says. Uh, and Gene Segura, right? It was nice to see him finally collect the knock last night. I mean, he's been struggling a little bit since coming back from the injury. Uh, as he finally does that last night. And Bryson Stott, uh, definitely struggling. Uh, but the thing is, he's hitting the ball so hard, and that's the thing. It's it's really unfortunate for him. And a lot of solid contact last night that just was right to guys. It just, you know, it's a game of the inches. And, um, you know, it just was kind of an unlucky game last night. I'm not going to lie. It was kind of, it was a little unlucky for this offense. I mean, we definitely need to do a better job swinging the bats, but a little bit unlucky last night. And uh, Matt Freeland continues to do nothing out in center. I mean, it, it saw a little spark at the end of the Miami series, but I, I didn't really think that would amount to much. But Didi Gore is coming off the bench, uh, collecting an RBI double on a line drive to left field. That was huge. Uh, so I was definitely a big fan of, you know, Didi in that at bat, right? And going the other way, uh, which I love. So that was a huge hit right there. Unfortunately, didn't amount to much in this game. But Aaron Nola, five and a third, six hits, two runs, and two earn, one walk in, four strikeouts. Uh, you know, nice bounce back start uh, to his last start. He really, really struggled last time out. Uh, you know, against the uh, New York Mets, and uh, you know, I was just so fed up with him after the last year. I'm still not a huge fan of what he's done. Last night, I definitely saw him uh, have a little bit more command of his pitches, and I seemed to be, uh, you know, going out there and pitching a little bit more confidence. It seemed like he was a little bit more relaxed. Um, and I think, you know, partly this is because he's facing a team that's just, you know, of course, not very good in the Colorado Rockies. But to Jose Alvarado, he just continues to struggle out there um, and, uh, you know, throwing that wild pitch. And I understand, I, I partly blame that on JT. So, I mean, Jose Alvarado, the guy who threw the wild pitch at the end of the day, um, and uh, he just continues to struggle with his command. I mean, if he can't, I mean, who cares if the guy can throw 100 mile hours with his fastball? All he cares is that he locates it. I enjoy watching Zach Eflin pitch more than this guy. I mean, Zach Eflin not overpowering stuff, and he knows how to locate it much, much better than this. I can't stand, I can't stand these kind of guys that, you know, have all this crazy stuff, but they just can't locate it. Uh, and that's what Jose Alvarado is. And James Norwood, uh, not very good last night. I mean, you know, it's that inning. And of course, he allows the uh, Randall Gritchick two RBI double on that line drive to right. And uh, Corey Knable with a solid uh, bottom of the eighth inning. Keep that game, you know, close. I mean, it still was a pretty close game. Of course, we lose 4-1 to last night. And that'd be your final uh, as the Phillies drop the first game in Colorado. And this road trip has been terrible. Uh, even if they do manage to win the next few games, as I'd say it's pretty unlikely. I mean, hopefully we can just win one. And then we limp back to Citizens Bank Park to face the Milwaukee Brewers on Fridays. We get the off day on Thursday, which is a very, very much needed off day. I mean, my goodness gracious, this team has just not been playing good baseball. And, I mean, what is this now? If we lose tonight, three straight series losses uh, for this team. And uh, I'm still not over that Miami series. I thought that was a disgrace uh, to lose three out of four to, the, you know, to them. But, uh, I mean, still, I mean, this Colorado Rockies team, I mean, come on. I mean, I, Chris Bryant wasn't even in the lineup last night. So, they're, you know, they're arguably their best hitter, wasn't even in the lineup last night uh, as Bud Black uh, did. The Rockies manager, Bud Black, did keep him out of the lineup. Um, and uh, this offense is doing nothing. We're in Colorado where the air is thin. You could launch the ball, I mean, way out of the ballpark. And we're in Colorado. I mean, we're, I mean this is like the hitter's dream. The hitter's dream. And we only score one run. We only score one run. It was by a guy uh, that barely even had a 600 OPS last year. Uh, so that's the guy. That, it was the only guy that drove in a run last night. So that should really tell you something. Bryce Harper, I understand, as I said, he had to collect that single. I mean, it was pretty hard hit. Uh, but uh, honestly, he hasn't really been there so far this year. Uh, I understand he's battling, uh, you know, a little uh, injury right now, a little soreness. As he did uh, throw the home plate, I believe that was against the New York Mets. Uh, last week uh, to try to uh, nab runner home plate and uh, he was holding it afterward and he was in some uh, you know definitely in some discomfort uh, so that's why he's been DHing uh, and uh, we're just not working good at bats as I said we're way too eager we're not being patient enough we're not sitting back and trying to find our pitch we're just we're just so this just, just overly eager. Nick Castellanos like reaching for a slider that's like pretty much bouncing to the plate and he's like lunging out and trying to like golf at it it's like I understand it's, it looks much, you know, easier than it really is. I mean, of course, I, I'm not saying it's easy. I mean, I, I, I'm not saying that if I went up there, I'd do any better. But 
I guarantee I'd do much, much worse than these guys. But, I mean, we're just not playing smart baseball. Um, and, uh, you know, these are the teams, these are the kind of games at the end of the year. I mean, of course, this is only game 11 last night. But uh, game 162, you look back and these kind of things, as I mentioned in game 162 last season, I said, uh, you know, look back to losses like the, you know, Arizona Diamondbacks. And we lose to the Marlins so frequently. We, you know, lost two out of three to Pittsburgh Pirates last year. The kind of losses that keep you from getting in the postseason. Um, and uh, it really is it's just it's it's facts man I mean that's that's what the that's what the truth is uh, you know no question about that uh, but the Atlanta Braves dropped the first game of the series out there in LA as Freddie Freeman is first at bat against the Atlanta Braves is a home run to left center field that was very very cool uh, as you see his son did run up to Dansby Swanson the shortstop for the Atlanta Braves that was kind of a cool moment I mean uh, Freddie Freeman got it I do respect I'm so glad he's out of our division of course, Matt Olson, you know, doing pretty well for the Atlanta Braves so far. He, you know, because that's his replacement. Um, but uh, it definitely was strange to see Freddie Freeman circle the bases against the Atlanta Braves. I, you know, definitely was interesting to see that. So the Nationals game against the Arizona Diamondbacks was rained out last night, uh, as the Mets uh, game against the San Francisco Giants at Citi Field also was rained out last night. Uh, so, of course, we don't really have any other updates uh, within our division uh, for those games. But currently, the Nationals and Diamondbacks are playing in D.C. as the Nationals currently be 3-1 in the bottom of the sixth inning. Uh, so, uh, hopefully this offense is going to get it going tonight. I mean, Kyle Gibson taking the mound, 1-1 one one with a 3-0-9 year race, coming off a rough start against the Miami Marlins last Friday. And Freeland on the mound for Colorado, 0-2 with a 10 year We have to go out hacking tonight. We have to go out and score runs. Uh, we have to go out in there and score runs. I mean, uh, we just can't be continuing to strike out. I mean, we strike out a lot. I mean, I think we went into the season thinking we were going to be striking out a lot. I understand that. I'm a little bit more sympathetic of that. I mean, I don't care if we're really striking out a lot, if we're hitting a lot of home runs, I mean, you know, driving a lot of runs, but I really care if we're striking out a lot if we're not doing that. And that's not – and that's exactly what's happening. We're not, we're not getting the job done. Uh, and our situational hitting still isn't there. But as you said, I, I do feel a little sympathy for JT, uh, you know, for him lining that ball right up the middle – uh, and it just happened to be caught. Uh, and then, of course, they double off DD at second. That right there. I, I had a little hope after the DD Gores RBI double. We have second and third one out. I'm like, you know what? I, I still don't think we win, but I'm like, you know, I have maybe a little hope. That was the, the highlight of the game for me. I think at that point, I'm like, that's when I had the most hope, uh, you know, at that point right there. And it just was such a letdown and happened, like, within, like, 10 seconds. I mean, he caught the ball and he throws back the second. Uh, and there you go right there. Then 10 seconds, our hope just was down the drain. Uh, for that game, and we all knew it was over at that point. And we went down very quietly uh, in the top of the ninth inning. I mean, Reese Hoskins drawing a good walk, as he always does, you know, going against Alex Colomb. As he gets to save last night. Uh, but Aaron Noll, I was still pretty impressed with him, though. I mean, he just didn't really get any run support, not at all, uh, as Joe Girardi continues to have him on a short leash. And Kyle Schwarber, I understand he homer on Sunday against Miami, but what has he done other than that? I mean, he's done nothing. Uh, you know, measly 125 average. I mean, he's not really – I mean, he was – Drawing a good amount of walks, of course, Elias, but he really hasn't done that since he's entered the five hole. And, and you know what? I'm not as mad at him about that because he's not leading off. Uh, but uh, I don't really want to see JT to continue to lead off. I, I love JT, don't get me wrong, but uh, I partly understand it because he's not a clutch hitter. I mean, I, I, I like him more at the you know, top of the lineup because of the fact that, I mean, he's not really going to have a lot of guys to opportunities to drive guys in because he's probably one of the worst hitters I think I've ever seen in one scoring position. But also, I like to find a way to get Reese Hoskins up there. This is a guy that continues to consistently get on base. Uh, you know, even during his cold streaks, even when he's not hitting the ball at the ballpark, he still, he still is getting on base. He's drawing walks. He's still working somewhat good at bats. Uh, so Reese Hoskins is definitely one of the most underrated players in the game. Uh, but I'm frustrated. Our plate approach, terrible. Uh, terrible, terrible, terrible. Uh, so we're not drawing the amount of walks we should be. We're not working good at bats. We work good at bats. Stop going up there and swinging at everything. Uh, and Bryce Harper definitely swinging a lot of first pitches this year. I mean, we saw it a little bit last year. Uh, but to be more patient. Be more patient. Don't be overly patient. Uh, but be patient. Uh, be patient. Uh, so 840 again tonight. I, I just uh, Even a short period of time, I'm just so annoyed at these uh, late games. Uh, you know, I really wanted to get it out last night. Unfortunately, I had to travel this morning. Of course, now I'm here uh, in this beautiful area. And uh, Gibson, Freeland, 840 tonight. So, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you have not yet. Please turn on the notification bell. Please like this video, comment on this video, share this video, check out the social media, link in the description section at Philly Science Media, Instagram, Instagram, follow me on Twitter at Piazza Media, car text 267 225 email me at Philly Science Media at gmail.com, 840 tonight, Gibson Freeland. I'm Luke and I'll talk to you later. Let's go, Phil. I'll see you guys.